A Christchurch man is dead and 33 others injured after a collision early this morning between a transport board bus and a minibus at Eagle Hall in St. Michael. The deceased is George Anthony Blackman, 62 years of 7th Avenue Hearts Gap. Blackman, who was reportedly a gardener, was identified by family members who arrived on the scene at about 10 this morning. Earlier, Barbados Emergency Services were pressed into action, responding to the call, which came in about half past five, with a mass casualty operation being established at the Rubis service station in Eagle Hall. Scores of curious onlookers gathered as the area was cordoned off for hours to all vehicular traffic. Six ambulances took some of the injured to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and the nearby Branford Tate Polyclinic in Black Rock. Police Public Relations Officer Inspector David Welch gave an update on the scene. At this point in time, the emergency medical area has been dismantled. This was dismantled around 8.30. This has paved the way for the police to continue their investigations. As an update towards the conditions of those who were injured, we had five doctors from the QH, as I said before, led by Dr. David Bayer. We had 15 serious patients transported to the QEH by ambulances. We had 17 transported to the polyclinic at Black Rock. And as I said before, we had one death at the scene. Prime Minister Fandel Stort has promised to continue efforts to ensure the island maintains a high level of repeat visitors. These include paying attention to law and order and the provision of other public services. He spoke last evening at his official residence at Ilara Court as he held a reception for scores of repeat visitors from the main markets including the UK, the US, the Caribbean and Canada. The Prime Minister told them the island values their business as it needs the foreign exchange generated from the industry. So we cannot afford to take for granted the confidence which you have continued to show in Barbados. I met people tonight who have told me that they have been coming here for the last 50 years, some for the last 40 years, various periods of time. And you don't leave Barbados and come back unless you have confidence in the country. And as the country's prime minister, I feel obliged. I think a compelling sense of appropriateness uh, dictates that I thank you for the confidence which you have continued to show in this country. And some of the tourists told CBC about some of their experiences when they visit the island. One of the things I like to do, believe it or not, is every year we organize a rum shop tour. We jump in our cars and we have a local guy that works as a gardener at the Bougain Villa. He's known all over the island and he jumps in the car and takes us to the rum shops in the country. And where we sit and talk to people and uh, enjoy their company. This island is a palindrome. Everyone goes, wow, W-O-W. Fantastic, sister, I tell you. You have an island beyond, beyond, beyond paradise. I've never been treated badly by one person here in Barbados in my whole life. We keep coming back. We only have another 27 years left in our timeshare. So we'll be back every year. And like, like we spend the whole month of January here now every year. My eyes were bugging out of my head. I, it was a beautiful evening and I really, really appreciate being invited here. That was, it, it's, I feel like royalty. <laughs> A restructuring plan for the Transport Board is in the works. This assurance from Minister of Public Works and Transport, Michael Lashley, as government searches for ways to turn around the fortunes of the public entity. We have to, to integrate, um, of course, um, the private transportation with the public transport. It is too costly um, in terms of um, the expenses. And we are looking at bringing efficiencies to the board. and. Um, that is part of the, the, the restructuring program and to bring some prof profitability to the transport board. Uh, we're looking at new routes, uh, we're looking at engaging um, the transport authority and transport board to work together 
as one. And we, we have two committees in place that should be reporting back to us within a week's time with that restructuring plan. Mr. Lashley says maintenance of the buses is one of the major issues that has to be addressed by the board. Where you have fleet, there must be a stringent maintenance program in place. I, in fact, I met with UCAL yesterday. I met with UCAL on Friday with Saroy, and I met with UCAL, in fact, I went in the workshop, I met all the workers yesterday at UCAL. And we had a very, very, very good discussion, very good meeting, and from here in now forward, we, we, you can see really an improvement um, in the maintenance. Mr. Lashley expects that hundreds of jobs will be created through the Adopt a Highway project recently announced by Finance Minister Chris Sinclair. He provided an update on the program. We've had the final discussion on that yesterday. We've gone into town planning. Uh, my team will be meeting with town planning, uh, the town planning department, I think on Thursday to finalize um, that project. Um, my understanding that there are 50 companies that will be involved. Minister Lashley says the project will run from the Grantley Adams International Airport to mile and a quarter in St. Peter. The Catholic Bishop of Barbados has suggested a program to help deal with what he sees as a new level of poverty in society. This will develop, according to Bishop Jason Gordon, when people lose their jobs as the tough economic conditions continue in Barbados. Bishop Gordon says it is based on this premise that the Roman Catholic Church launched the initiative called The Hub. How it will evolve will be dependent also on the people who will come in and be part of this hub. One of the great challenges for anyone who has been unemployed is waking up the morning after and realizing there's no place to go. It's not just the lack of cash, it's not just a lack of food, it's a lack of hope and it's a lack of routine, and it's a, the, the lack of, of anything that brings a sense of hope for, for the person's life. The bishop also wants businesses like hairdressers and barbers to offer one free service to unemployed people. We also want to do other things like, like challenge the, the, the community um, for things that people who are unemployed really can't afford. We, we want to get some of the hairdressers to, to offer one haircut a, a month or one grooming a month because for somebody who has been working for a long time and you can't afford that those are the little things that make life different to be able to go out in public and feel that you still have your dignity intact while we've tried to find the way to employment and to other things to, to give people a sense of dignity a sense of purpose a sense of hope that's why we're calling it the hub people helping people